Okay, hi, uh, my name is Derek, and I'm your instructor for our machine learning class uh, and data analytics class. Um, yeah, and today is, is really kind of about uh, data analytics or data analysis. So we're going to be looking at the pandas library and the, uh, the pandas data frame object that the pandas library um, provides for us to use, okay? So we're going to be using the notebook that I called pandas here. Uh, having a little bit of lag here. What happened? There we go. Um, so as usual, let me start by um, restarting and clearing my my. Uh, there we go. Hmm. Um, restart the kernel and clear all the outputs there. Okay. So. Um, so uh, pandas is a library whose uh, main purpose is, is doing, you know, this kinds of data analytics um, uh, work, data analysis, okay? So uh, as far as I know, the it, it was inspired basically from the R language, actually. So the R language has this concept of a data frame, and, and basically, you know, the, the, the data frame that's um, implemented in pandas for us to use replicates a lot of the ability of the R data frame, right? So uh, what a data frame is, so hopefully you've watched the video on NumPy. So the data frame gives you a, a table of, of, of data that you can manipulate, okay? Uh, li like a two-dimensional NumPy array, but um, there's a couple of differences. So um, for one thing, the, probably the most important one is that for tables of data, the, the attributes, the columns, really have names, okay? So when you're working with data and analyzing it and manipulating it, um, you know, you, you really don't, it, it's the name of the feature. So it's not the, the column index, some, just some number. It's, it's you know, the, 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 the feature name. So the weight or the height or the, um, um, I don't know, whatever the measurement is. You know, name, age, those types of things, right? So that's normally how we think about a, a table of data if we want to, you know, get a particular feature or a particular set of features, right? So the, the data frame basically gives you that. So the, the primary way to access columns or features in, in a data frame table is by attribute name, all right? Um, but um, and and so the other major difference is that that those columns, um, which are called series in data frames, uh, pandas data frames, um, they can be of different types. So in a NumPy array, all data in the the array has to be of the same data type, right? Um, so so a, a pandas data frame allows you to collect. Um, columns or attributes uh, where the columns could be of different types, okay? And so that, that can be very useful as well when you're doing uh, data explorations and, and, and typical data analytics tasks, all right? So, um, but in general, you can actually have more than kind of two-dimensional data frames. I'm not going to look at that in this video, okay? So, you know, by far the most typical way to use tables of information, and the way we're going to be using it for our machine learning course, is really as a two-dimensional table. So once again, you know, rows are going to be samples, um, or they might be subjects in an experiment, or um, something like that, and then the columns are the features or the attributes that we collected, okay? So that implies, again, like, like a two-dimensional NumPy array, that all of the um, columns in a data frame have to have exactly the same length, have the same number of values, because we have to have one value for every row, or one value for every sampled um, subject that, that we have in our table, right? So let's take a look at it. So real quickly, I'll first look at the series. So the series is the object behind the scenes um, that defines an attribute, that defines a column of a data frame. So, you know, we, we don't um, uh, often do series by themselves. Okay, so oh, I skipped over this. So, um, again, by convention, often people use PD as an alias for pandas. We'll, we'll follow that convention. So, again, I probably said this in my previous video. It's, it doesn't save a whole lot of, of understanding, understandability or typing 
by shortening these, but, uh, but it's pretty common usage um, as of the making of this video to use PD for pandas and NP for NumPy, okay? So, um, uh, a series is, is going to be what's used to represent a, a column of data behind the scenes. Um, Sometimes we, we create series directly, but most of the time we're going to be working with data frames um, and it manages the, the series that represent the columns of, of the data. So, so you know, kind of like a NumPy array, I mean, you can create a series by giving it a regular Python list um, and it'll create the series. So notice here, so, so a couple of things about this and... and like we did for a NumPy array. So there's a bunch of um, attributes that get asked for a, a series. So in this case, uh, so all series um, do have one single data type. So all the data in a column or an attribute have to be of the same type, all right? Um, so, so if you look at this, so um, and it decided that, that the most general type that it needed to use here was a float, okay? If I didn't have this NAN here, this, this um, NAN stands for not a number, but that's used to, to represent uh, missing values uh, in Python, and we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in this video. Uh, but if I didn't have that in there, it probably would have, would have represented these as, as um, um, uh, some kind of an integer type. Right, yeah, integer 64. It's a little bit simpler, but uh, in order to kind of handle this uh, this missing value, um, it's going to instead use a, a floating point uh, type. Okay. So anyway, so, so but we we have a data type. Um, notice I gave a name to this attribute, so you don't have to give a name if you're just working with a single attribute, a single series. But when you have a collection of them in a data frame, uh, it, you definitely want every one of them to have. Um, um, a unique and descriptive name of that attribute or of that feature. Okay, so I just call it frequency here. But you know these others are kind of similar to the the dimensions of, of a NumPy array. Um, so you know in this case we had six values, so the total size was six. Um, you know, and, and it's a one-dimensional. So so each column is one-dimensional by itself. So it, so if you think of it as like a NumPy shape, it, it's it's a one-dimensional vector with six values in it. Um, and there's other features that we'll probably come across. For example, there's one that tells you whether there's missing values or not. It's a, a Boolean true or false that, that keeps track of whether there's any missing values at all or not uh, in the series. Okay. So a series is like, you know, it's, it's a sequence like a, a regular Python list um, or like a NumPy array that's one-dimensional, so a NumPy vector. So uh, anything that we can do to access and slice that we've talked about in previous videos, you can do with a NumPy series. So, you know, we can get a particular value at index, or we can slice it uh, from zero up to the third value, you know, and that type of thing. All right? So, um, as I've already mentioned, I've already talked a little bit about a data frame. A data frame is really behind the scenes a collection of these series objects where the series objects are all the same size and they represent the columns or the features of the data frame, okay? So then you have some number of rows, all right? So like in a, a previous video, I mean, the, the main thing that we're trying to do with a data frame is we want to give these attributes, instead of having integer indexes, we want to give these features names to make it easy to do data analytics tasks, okay? So, kind of like you can do with a dictionary, we can think of a data frame as a data dictionary where each of the columns, um, the, the name of the column is, is kind of the key in order to access or, or, or get out that column. Um, although, as we'll see, a data frame is more than just a dictionary of series or di dictionaries of sequences, okay? But this is one common way that we could create uh, a data frame by hand, okay? So, you know, it, so I, I show cup, creating a couple of data frames by hand here, um, but again, in this class, we won't be really doing this. We'll, we'll be loading in data from files or some other source, right? So, so you don't normally create made-up data like this. This is just for illustration purposes. But here we, we've got a data frame now. Um, if you just print it out, you'll see, you know, so, so we've got all these columns, and these are the names, A, B, C, D, um, 
Um, I skipped E there. I need to fix that. So since I had two columns with the same name, it ended up using probably the second one, the last one with the test and train there. Um, so let's rerun that. So, so, so yeah, now we've got uh, the six columns, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Um, a couple things. So, so yeah, I mean, yeah, you can you can give a series uh, in there, but if you give other things, like for example, if you just give a, a scalar value, like a single value, it'll just repeat that scalar value as needed. Okay. So in this case, one of our series had four had a size of four, which was um, this one here, or maybe yeah, two. I mean, a couple of them had four, but the the largest one was four. So that's the point. So anything that's less than four is going to get values filled in. Okay. So like a scalar will just get repeated, um, and, and the second one was actually a scalar as well. It was just a, 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 a timestamp, like, so like a date, but that got repeated. Um, so if you have something that's, that's not a scalar, but it's not, doesn't have a, a size of four, the things get filled in with missing values. So, so this one uh, here, one, three, and five, got filled in with a missing value at the end. Okay. Um, so... You know, again, like, like a NumPy array and like a series, we've got a bunch of different uh, just attributes of the uh, data frame that can be useful. So like we can get a list of the columns. So this is the column names, that key in order to pull out the columns. Um, uh, an index. So um, um, as we'll see on the next one here, uh, every data frame also has a unique index okay so this has to be like an index in a database this has to be the the every index has to be unique so you can't have two rows indexed with the same value okay if you don't provide an index which we didn't do here by default it just numbers them as if like like you know like a zero based uh, index for an array right so so we end up with row zero the first row in, has an index of zero and the second one is one and so on um, but, but yeah, you can have a more complex index, as we'll see in a second here. Uh, you can pull out the data type. So notice, uh, so the, the data types of the first column was a floating point value. The second one was using this, this date time. Uh, we had a float, and it, um, if, if it can't really figure out, if it's a string type, it'll kind of default it down to this generic object type, uh, like here. Um, E ended up being a categorical variable. Right, so because we explicitly create a category later on, we'll talk about um, some categorical attributes uh, here. But um, um, okay, so you know, most of, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty much only going to be talking about two-dimensional tables in this class. So there's really two dimensions: the rows and the columns, where the rows are our samples and the columns are the features of our table here. In this case, we got four rows, and we got uh, it's seven because I'm sorry. Yeah, there are seven, so so we have seven features here. So so the the number of features, uh, the number of columns doesn't include the index, all right? So that's not included in that. So there's actually 28 different entries in this table here. You can always convert uh, a NumPy, uh, or sorry, a, a, a Python, a, a data frame into a NumPy array. So one way you can do that is values, or you can call the um, as uh, as uh, as NumPy array a function, as we'll see later on here. So one thing about this, so again, remember a a, uh, um, a NumPy array, the the values have to be all the same type. So if you have anything like an object in there, it's going to have to convert everything into an object, right? So in this case, really these are all kind of like strings. Uh, even though they, they kind of look like different types here, but, but they all end up being this generic object type, okay? But if all your values in your data frame are numbers, it'll convert it into like a, you know, the, the d data type will be float or int, which is what we'll need in order to use these in like um, the scikit-learn library or, or um, other machine learning kinds of um, contexts here. So uh, another quick example um, where we're giving... Um, a uh, dictionary here. So actually, I guess I already kind of showed this example. So again, if 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 all, all it's going to force all of these attributes to be of the same size. So if we're missing any for a series, it'll fill it in um, with this NAN, which represents a missing value, basically. So um, some other quick things. So um, 
some other attributes since we're talking about attributes of, of these tables. So every column gets an, uh, uh, an attribute that you can directly access, which will pull out the series. So I can, I can get the column B. Actually, this is from the first data frame, uh, which was uh, these values, the, the date times um, here, by doing df.b. Um, or get the F column, or get the B column from our, my second data frame, and so on. So, so we'll be using that a lot. But that's, again, that's the most, well, if you just need to work with a single attribute, I mean, that's the, the, the easiest thing to do, is just to use this in order to, to directly access the attribute. And you'll get back, basically, the series. Um, and you can do whatever you can, whatever you can normally do with a series, then you can do it with that, that you got back. Um, so, so let's let's create a bigger data frame here, and um, I'll also show you an example of using something else besides an integer um, for the index for the rows. So here we'll create a range of rows. This is a function from pandas that you can use. Um, so one of the things that pandas is really good with is working with um, time series data. So there's a lot of support in there for creating series of dates and times and things and working with them. So, um, so here we just have a series of dates starting at um, July 1st going for 60 days. So that ends up ending up on the uh, 29th of uh, August, basically there. So, um, and I'm going to create this, this pandas data frame with, with actually 26 columns and I'm just going to give them all names A through Z so we have that 26 and the and, and we're just going to fill it in with a bunch of random data here so notice I can I can I can send in just a, a two-dimensional uh, numpy array to use uh, instead of a data dictionary and it'll use this for all my data so and since my my data frame here uh, has 26 columns and 60 rows uh, it fits in with all these so, so I've got um, a set of column names um, so we'll use these for my column names A through Z and I've got uh, a set of 60 indexes so it will use that to index all my rows with these dates here all right. so that's that's our data frame so if we look at the shape it's a 60 row by 26 column shape uh, we can look at the first five here. So since this is kind of long, it kind of truncates it a bit. So it doesn't show all 26 columns, but it shows the first few, dot, 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 and then the last few here, right? Uh, so again, notice our index is really the date. So for the first five indexes were July 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th, right? And then the rest of these are just columns of, of random numbers uh, here that we generate. Um, oh, so, you know, this is the first example. I'm using a function instead of an attribute, so the head is actually a function, so I can, I can head. And by default, it gets the first five values. There's also a tail, so if I want to see the last uh, three um, samples in this data frame, I can, I can do tail three. So that gets me the um, August 27th, 28th, and 29th samples here. Um, so we already demonstrated so you can pull out the index uh, we can get the, the you know any of the columns like F uh, of course these are all going to just be random numbers but F uh, there's this is the other one I tried so we can use either two numpy um, so that's the same as doing values so either way so you can say the, so the result is a numpy array and in this case though you know since all the values are basically floating point types, um, if you pull it out like that, uh, you'll see that, that the resulting data type uh, of the NumPy array is a, is a float data type, right? Which is nice. So, so we'll use that. So nor the, our normal thing to do in our machine learning class is to first load stuff into a data frame so we can do some um, data manipulations and data exploration. And then one of our manipulations will be we'll, we'll end up converting everything into numbers because we'll need everything as numerical values normally, so we can run machine learning um, algorithms and, and you know machine learning classifiers and things um, on 
our data set, right? So, so our final thing, we'll want all of our comms to be numbers so we can do like like this, change them into a, a NumPy array and then use that for like scikit-learn or something like that. Um, okay, so selecting data uh, in a NumPy array, uh, you can slice data frames, although um, as I'll show here, so, so there's some limitations, okay? So anyway, so the, the, the normal square brackets which we use to index uh, a regular Python list and sequences and we use to index and slice a NumPy array works kind of. Uh, so for example I can get the first three rows by doing a numerical slice. Right? I can also slice, um, the, the, this is defined to slice, this is mostly used to slice um, columns. Okay, so I can get a single column Right, so although I normally uh, just uh, use this syntax if I want just a single column, right? That C. So those are equivalent. That gets my column that's labeled C here. But I can't get multiple columns. So if, so if I want to get multiple columns, get a, like a slice of multiple columns, um, I can't do that. I could do something though like this. So I can use something that's kind of like fancy indexing. Right, so I can give a list of column names, and so this will slice out the the D, Q, and P columns by name if I if I pass in a NumPy or sorry a, a regular Python list of names. Um, so it gives me two. This is actually since this is more than one series, this is actually a new data frame um, with the D, Q, and P columns. Right, so you notice it pulls it keeps the index. So, so we got the index, and, and but just with these three columns now. However, um, if um, you're expecting to be able to do full slicing, you know, by like rows and columns, like say for example by index, um, that is not supported with the, with directly with this. So the 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 square bracket is, is just limited to either getting rows by the index number um, or columns by the column name. So yeah, if I wanted to get all the rows, uh, just the first three columns, but all the rows of those first three columns, um, that doesn't work. Um, so you get a, a value error if you do this. Right. Uh, and, and the error message here isn't particularly good, but but yeah, I mean this is this is really just not a way you can use the slicing, right? So. I mean, it's understandable if, if you were expecting that to work, right? So that that it's actually good in some ways. That shows your transferring I, concepts or ideas from NumPy arrays that you should have learned in like the previous video to here. But um, th there is a way to do that. You have to use a, um, a slightly more involved syntax. So if you want to to index. A, a, a data frame by index number, by integer index, you can use the iloc, okay? So a data frame that iloc property allows you to do all the same kind of indexing purely by index number. Okay, so if I want to get the first three columns, all the rows, ju and just the first three columns of all those rows, I can use iloc that, right? Uh, and this will support all the slicing like we've talked about. So I can get all of the rows um, every other one, so, um, or every third one, for example, right? So that'd give me AD, you know, up to, up to the last one, and so on, right? Um, likewise, the, um, um, or, or another example, right? So, so get, uh, the last three columns, right? And, and just, and you can get, you can slice rows and columns, so I can get just the first five rows and just the, the last three columns from those five rows, right? But, you know, kind of one caveat about this, so, so while this works, and sometimes we have to resort to that, but if you find yourself doing that a lot, it might be, uh, you know, it, it's like a code smell, it's a data analytics smell in this case, because it means that you're not really using the data frame the way it's supposed to be used. The, the, the way a data frame is supposed to be used is you should be using those, um, uh, attribute names to be accessing the data frame, okay? And if you're not using those, if you're resorting to using column indexes, 
um, you know, you, you really probably want it back into like a, a NumPy array where you can only use column indexes. So, um, so there's also something called I location. So, uh, sorry, there's something called just loc, loc, L O K for location. So if you want to slice things by rows and columns by the um, by the label names, you want to use loc instead of I loc. So I loc is for index using integer indexes, and loc is for slight, more complex slicing using uh, attributes. Um, so in particular, um, like um, um, you actually can't. Um, so I didn't didn't mention this before, but uh, you can't use the square brackets, for example, to access by index name or by index value. So if I did, did the DF um, and tried to get uh, so, so date zero is actually one of the, one of the actual indexes, the, the the July 1st index date here. So again, you'll get a key error, right? Uh, but so if that's what you really want to do, um, um, you can use loc instead. Right. If I want to, if I want to get all of the values for the uh, the thirtieth index, okay. So this this will be all the values for July thirty first, basically here. All right. But you know, even more so, this allows slicing, um, which is, you know, at, at first glance you might think this is really strange, because. Um, it, it can figure out how to slice by like a label name. So here, in this case, we're slicing rows still. So, so I'm I'm slicing from the fifth date, which was July sixth, to the fifteenth date, right? Um, and even further, uh, some kinds of, of label names. So, so it can actually figure out strings and, and turn that into a, a a date sequence and slice. So you get the same slice if you do it like that instead, right? Um, and you can use this to slice by uh, the attribute name by columns as well. So, so this is equivalent to getting all rows just to column L. So that's equivalent to doing that, um, or doing um, the um, as we've already shown. Both of those are equivalent to just getting the attribute name dot L. All right. But the reason why, I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't normally do, sorry to keep going back, but so I wouldn't normally do um, this if I just want column L, right? I would just do the simpler df.l. But if I need to get a slice of columns, uh, this is what you need. You need the loc, okay? If you need to get a slice of columns by the actual name. And here's another way where columns in a data frame are not really um, a key into a data dictionary because there really is an ordering of the columns and, and so if, if you slice by columns like from L to P, Pandas data frame knows what you mean. So that means I want all the columns from L to P. So all rows and, and the columns from L up to P in the ordering of, of the, the current ordering of my column names, okay? So that's elemental P. Although one thing I should point out, I, I'm, I'm sure I mentioned it in my notebook here, so one thing that's a little bit surprising is a, a slice by these attribute names starts at the beginning one and it goes up to, but it also includes the ending one, okay? So that's different from slicing by indexes. So when you slice by index number, it starts at the beginning one and goes up to, but doesn't include the last one when you do these slices, all right? So there's a reason why, um, and in some ways, you know, you, you hate to see inconsistencies like that when you're doing slicing. The main reason is if you don't do it like this, there's no way to actually indicate like the last um, column um, uh, in a slice here. That's, mine's too big here, so I can't really. Oops. Um, uh, if you're slicing by the attribute name. Right, so so if it didn't include the last one, it'd be tough to get that because you can't combine this with like a negative index. I don't think, yeah. So that's a, that's an error there. Right. So I think that's the main reason why it, the 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 slicing by an attribute name includes the last one, uh, which is different from slicing by a column index, which doesn't normally uh, include that. So, although again, I think right, if you if you um, 
don't include that, it will um, it will default to using all the way to the last one. Yeah. So um, so again, that's another way that that you could just get all the, way to the last one. So 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 since you can do that again, I'm not too certain why they changed um, that. Um, but uh, anyway, moving on. Um, so yeah, I already mentioned this. So the, the, the last thing is is that we ended up with a column that should be there. So, uh, so and I already discussed this as well. So so even though um, columns are accessed like like keys in a dictionary, there is an order still. So unlike a di unlike the keys in a dictionary, the columns are ordered. Okay, and if you need to, you can change the order of the attributes, which sometimes you need to do in a data frame, for example, to make it easier to, to slice things. So you might group related attributes together in your ordering for your data frame. So kind of real quickly is, is again, is a made up example. Um, here I just pull, I, I just remove M and X from my columns, um, and then I add them back in to the beginning of this list called columns. So now I've got MX followed by the rest of the columns with M and X removed. So now if, if you, um, again, so all I'm doing, I'm using the, the fancy indexing. So if I give it a list like I do here, this will pull out the columns, but it'll pull them out in this new order. And then I assign the result of that back into the data frame. Okay. So the result of doing that is, is I end up reordering my columns so that M and X are first, followed by all the rest of them with M and X removed. Okay. Um, so uh, besides uh, indexing by uh, an integer index and indexing by the column names. We can also do Boolean indexing, uh, which is very useful, which we'll use a lot, um, like in a NumPy array. So the, the most common way we'll be using that is we often want to get the rows or the samples whose attribute in some particular column meet, meet some criteria, OK? So again, so if we want only the samples uh, where the, the, the values in M are greater than 1, uh, we can do something like this. So the, the result um, of doing this, so maybe I should have shown this first, is simply a, a, a Boolean, um, basically a Boolean series or a Boolean sequence, right, that's true for all the places where m um, is greater than 1, like here, and is false for all the places where m um, is less than 1, right? So that just re returns a new series uh, of false and true values, but then I can use that as an index to only pull out the rows. So, so the result of using this as an index, it'll only pull out these rows where it's true. So it'll pull out um, July 9th, July 10th, and so on, where presumably that's the places where the value in the column in was greater than 1, right? So the result of that, there's, there was only nine rows where that was greater than 1. And, and now that we can see them, we can see definitely these are all, um, you know, greater than 1 here. And like we did for arrays, you know, we can combine these uh, into more complex expressions. Um, and like we discussed in the previous video, you can't use the AND keyword, but uh, um, you can, um, and, and uh, there's probably some data frame, uh, there's probably some pandas functions to, to do these logical operators, or you can use the bitwise operator. So if I want all the values where the value was greater than one, in the feature m, and at the same time the value was less than neg negative one in the feature x, I can do that. Um, and uh, in this case, um, since I generated this data randomly, I had none where that was true. So I'm going to have to loosen my constraints a little bit. So let's say where the the data frame is less than negative 0.5, because I know there's there's a nine that are greater than one currently. Um, and, and so there's one where x is, is um, less than negative 5. Uh, oh, I could have seen this here. So, um, so yeah, all the, all the rest of these were greater than negative 0.5. So, um, so, so yeah, we, we got that one that was, there was only this one that was less than 
negative 0.5. So there we go, right? Um, and just as a hint, you know, so again, it's, it's good to break things down. So this begins to become kind of complex and unreadable. So I often, myself personally, like to just first create my integer, sorry, my Boolean index as a sequence of, of the, the um, logical expressions. Um, so the logical test with my logical expressions together. The result of that is you can think of that like a mask, um, and then you can use that. Um, so again, we'll get nothing here unless I change that. Um, less than zero, we'll say. We'll get um, a couple here at X that were less than zero. So um, so all of them, yeah, not all of them, so only six of them of the nine originally are less than zero here in X. So. But yeah, again, again, this is all the samples. You know, Make sure you understand this because this is important, right? So this is all the samples in my data set whose values in M, where, where it's both true that the values in M were greater than 1 and the values in X were less than 0 there. Right? So that's a very powerful thing that we can do with data frames to select stuff like that. So, um, so another thing, so sometimes, so all of our data is, is uh, numerical in this, this data frame that I made up. Uh, but sometimes we want to do similar things, but select things by category, right? Um, so here, so now I kind of added a category to the end called CAT. I'm so big, I gotta scroll through here, so that's kind of not good, but. Um, So here, the, the category just has values 1, 2, and 3 in there, although only 10 of them, only 5 of them are 1 and 5 of them are 3, okay? So um, that, that was all just so I could select those 10 out here as an example, right? So, so if I have categorical data, um, so actually these are still not really categories yet. Um, these are um, um, object types or strings, but, but still, um, I can use the is in, right? So if I only want, want the ones, who the, who the category is one and three, I can use is in there. So that should result in those ten values where we have, end up with one and threes on there. Right? Um, So uh, on this previous example, we just actually added a whole new column to our data frame, right? So, so the way you do that um, is simply if if I do an assignment to a cat to a column that doesn't exist, right? Uh, it will just add the new column. So basically, so so data frames are very mutable, right? So so you can you can easily add new um, columns to data frames, and you can also easily change values. So here, this section is about, um, um, so we already saw an example of adding data. Um, so here, let's just ex extract out again only those last three columns um, from our data frame. Um, um, and, and only the ones that, so it's, a, it's a little bit easier, smaller data frame we can work with, right? So uh, another example, so if I want to add another column called scalar, I can do that. And, and again, kind of like we saw when we created a data frame, if I just give it a scalar value, it'll repeat that value for all, all, the, um, for the, all the values in the new column. Um, I can add, again, like a NumPy array. Um, I can add another categorical variable, right? So these will be all three new um, three new uh, columns or three new attributes of my um, data frame added in here. Right? Uh, just by doing an assignment, so if I select a value or a particular set of values using some slice, I can change those values by using an assignment into it uh, instead. So if I want the value um, in my last row, so, I'm, so here I'm using iloc to slice. I'm going to get the value in the last row and in the zeroth column. So that's basically this value right here. So I, I can zero that out by doing that, right? So that gives a zero. Um, 
Now, it, and if you select multiple values and assign a scalar, it'll end up assigning all of those values, that scalar, okay? So if I want to, I can, uh, you, again, use loc instead of iloc to, to select a slice by, um, by, you know, by, by the, the attribute name. So this will get all the values from the, um, 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 you have to change my values here. So since I generated the, the data by random here, uh, when I slice things out, so my, my example might not match up anymore. So let's do the middle three from, let's say, the 22nd to the 29th. All right. But uh, I only want to select those three um, in the... Um, in the column called category, and I'm going to change all those to have a value of two. Okay, so that should just change these three to be the the to be two instead of what they are right now. Right. So from the 22nd to the 29th in that column, we got changed to two. All right. Um, you can change all the values. So here's a common thing. So maybe I need to. Um, derive an attribute or re-scale or do something about an attribute. So here, here are all the values that are in the values column that we added. Um, I'm going to derive a new attribute by squaring the existing value and multiplying the existing value by 3 and subtracting 5, and the result of that I'm going to assign back into the values column. Okay. So, so the result of that is now the new value is going to be the, what the original value is squared plus 3 times the value minus 5. So if you work that out, you should see that that's all got changed. Right. Um, and we can select all of a column and replace it. Like if you assign a scalar again, it's going to replace all the values you select with that scalar value, so that single value. So here we just replace our category two. Everything's positive now. So. Okay, so that's I mean, um, this is kind of the most important things for um, a data frame for viewing it and selecting data and adding or removing columns and stuff like that, okay? Um, so, so far up to this point, we've been using uh, made up data in our data frames, but that's not what we'll normally be doing um, in our class here. So normally we're going to have a data set that's been collected by someone and, and it's, it's out you know, normally in a file, you know, but it could be in like a database, an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, so nowadays it's going to be in something maybe more complicated, like a HDF5 big data storage container. Um, so it could be like on, on an Amazon, um, um, what are those called, um, in their storage uh, unit or something like that. Um, uh, I guess I already mentioned a database. It could just be a SQL database or a different kind of database, uh, an OSQL database or something like that. Anyway, um, so the normal thing that we do is we're going to be reading that data from some source, uh, and if it's small enough to fit in memory, we'll just read it all into a pandas data frame so that we can manipulate in, in memory. If it's truly big data, normally what you have to do is you have to sample from your source. So you try and sample a rep representative sample that you get into data so you can do some data ex exploration and um, visualization on your representative sample, okay? So, um, you should open up this data file um, in, um, in, um, like an editor and take a look at it, okay? So I'll just uh, look at the first few, first five values of the actual data file on the disk here, okay? So the, the data file I'm about ready to read in is is up in our data directory. And if you look at the first, um, so this, this is point out, heads point out, um, I thought it was going to be the first five lines, but I guess it's the first ten or something, right? But anyway, that's what the data looks like. So this is an example of a comma-separated value file. So here, each row is a sample um, uh, of data, or in this case, it's a uh, it's a trial and an experiment. So that's that's uh, that's an example of a sample. 
Um, and the columns are the, you know, the attributes, okay? In this case, the, actually the first row is not a sample, it's, it's really the, um, the labels for each of my attributes in the table, which is common. Although some, for some common separated values uh, files, you don't have your, ta your column label, so if you want to use it in a data frame, if you read it in without these, it would just assign numbers, I think, you know, 0, 1, 2 for the attribute names, but you'd probably want to figure out what those attribute names are and add, you know, your column names or your attribute names. So, but here we've already got these. Uh, by default, uh, it will assume that the first row is the column names, uh, or the attribute names, right? And then after that, each, each row um, is a column. So this, the second row is actually going to be read into index 0. Uh, and again, we don't have anything that's really kind of a unique ID in this this data, so we'll allow pandas to use the default index of you know zero for the first row, one for the second one, and so on. Right. So we can read in the data and, and take a look at what we get. Okay. And so and, and and each one of our attributes is separated by a comma. Okay. So as as I described here, for comma separated value file, um, I guess more generically, you can think of this as a delimited separated value file. So you can maybe find some files where the, the delimiter is like a tab, sometimes it's white space, sometimes it's something different like a colon or something, right? Um, and you can use, so um, you can specify uh, in read CSV if you have something that's different for your delimiter. Um, so you can use, you know, a, a tab or a colon or something like that if you need to. Um, so we can take a look at it. So we already know now that, that I've just described it that we should get end up with three columns with those names. Um, as we see here, the, the the shape of our data frame is has 350 rows by three columns. So there was actually 350 uh, what looked like trials of an experiment or, or samples here um, of our experiment. Right. Um, so here we see that. Um, the second attribute got read in as an integer, which we kind of would have expected. And the third one is a floating point value, but I was kind of expecting the first one to be read in as a, as a floating point value, but that didn't happen, right? So for some reason, we got uh, this more generic object, which we'll talk about. Um, and yeah, if we look at the first five, we should see the first, same first five minus our first row, which was just the attribute names here. So. Um, but yeah, these should match what we saw on the raw file here. Um, um, so these are kind of the beginnings of doing some data um, exploration tasks. So maybe the first thing you might want to do is, is use describe. So describe will give a summary of, of, of the stuff that it thinks is numeric data. So anything that's numeric data, it can count um, it up. Well, I could do that for non-numeric data, but anything that's it's numeric data, it can calculate the mean of it in the standard deviation and can calculate per the percentile um, intervals, so the min and max value and the value that was at the 50th percentile and that kind of stuff. So that's all it did here. Um, so you should note that this, that this column looks kind of like real data. So it had a min of 0 and a max of 2.9, and a, but a mean value of 0.83, you know, so. But here, you know, since the min and max were 50 uh, and the mean was at 25, that looks like it's not really data, it's something else. And, and as you can see, since it went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is most likely something like a, um, uh, so replicate, so it's like the, a, a, a trial ID or something. So it's, it's kind of some meta information about the experiment that was being performed here, right? Um, so let's look more at this closely at this uh, parasite a column um, feature and try to figure out. Um, I'm sorry, the, the virulence column feature and try to figure out um, um, what it did. Oh, uh, yeah. Before I do that, so here's the value counts for the the, the replicate. Okay. So actually, every one of the the, the different numbers one, two, three, four, up to fifty all had seven occurred seven times, okay? So again, that that um, that to me says basically um, we've got seven separate trials um, in this data, right, that are being replicated 50 times. So we've got seven different groups or something 
that, that happened here that, that was replicated 50 times each. All right. um, so what about virulence? Uh, so we can look at that. Um, so we had 50 occurrences of 0.5, 50 occurrences of 0.5, 6, 50 occurrences of 0.9, and so on. We have 50 occurrences, though, of something here, so it looks like we had some missing data, okay? So there's 50 occurrences of something that was a blank, a space, okay? Um, and, and that was why it ended up being um, changed into a object type instead of the expected floating point type. So since the, the common denominator was like this blank here, it, it had to represent everything as, as like a string or just um, an, uh, this, the, the generic object type, okay? Um, so we might want to confirm this. So, so, so here I'm searching for all of the uh, rows whose um, value is a blank. So there's a single space in there. And in fact, I do find that. So in fact, the last 50 values had a blank in there, right? Um, so, so it's actually the case that, I mean, that's, this is probably missing data, or for some reason they didn't label that, uh, whereas the other vir virulence levels were labeled, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Since those, since those seem to go from 0 0.5 up to 1, uh, you know, we might guess maybe this should have been 1.1, or maybe it was something else, like they, they, they tried two, like a really high virulence or something. So it's unclear, right? Um, so we might want to go ahead and treat that as missing data. So, so here we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to reload the data, but I'm going to use another one of these attributes, the NA values. So you can actually pass a list in here, but if I pass in... That, that a single space should be treated as a, a NA, which means treat as a missing value. Um, it'll load it up, but it'll use NA ends instead of um, like a blank space for those values. So now if we look at the data types, we get more of what I was expecting. So we get a float type for the virulence. Um, and so now we can describe, and we'll see that um, virulence now ends up in my description. We can see what the mean is. But notice that the count, I, I probably didn't mention this before, so the count of 350, since we know that we had 350 samples or 350 rows, means that nothing was missing from these two columns. But there was only a count of 300 here. So, so we've only got um, so 50 um, samples had missing numbers here. So if you look at the tail of data, so the, those last five, the, the virulence um, setting was missing from them. So, um, so normally when you do something like uh, calculate the mean on a column, whether you're doing it specifically yourself, like I just did here, or you get the mean um, reported to you like in a summary function like describe here, um, it will only do this on the values that are present, so it'll ignore the missing values, which is normally the right thing to do. Okay, so this is really the mean for the 300 values of virulence that we had, right? Uh, so in this case, since, since again virulence looks like to me like it, it's a, a meta parameter, it's an experimental manipulation. So we were manipulating virulence, you know, starting at 0.5 to 0.6 and 0.7. So the mean doesn't really mean a, mean a lot here, um, but um, that was just the, you know, since the values were from 0.5 to 1, the mean was just halfway in between there, 0.75. So. Um, and standard deviation doesn't really mean anything. So, so again, um, I'll talk more about this in, in a video um, coming up here, but um, kind of the first thing you have to do, you have to figure out how you're going to handle that missing data if you want, really want to analyze this data set. So the simplest thing to do would be kind of ignore it. So we could just drop that. So if we did that, we would end up with a new data set that has, so if you, if you just do drop NA, it'll drop all rows where some value is missing, right? So it'll drop those 50, those 50 rows that had a missing value there. Um, or another thing we could do is we could try and keep those, like, like and maybe fill it in. We could fill it in with like zero, 
Uh, here, like I said, my guess might be, maybe it's 1.1 since it happened, since it seemed like it, we, we started with 0.5 and then 0.6, then 1.0, and the missing ones were after that. Maybe it was 1.1, or maybe it was a virulence of 2 or something. Don't know. But we could fill it in with that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So here, again, we already saw some examples of, of changing the values of, of a column. So I'm going to fill that in. So normally when you do this, it doesn't actually change the data frame. It just returns the result, a copy of the result uh, of what would happen if it did it. So if, if I want to keep that in my data frame, I can, I can take that and assign that back in to be my new virulence column. So now I have to do that. Now I've got no missing data, right? So if I ask for the is in A, um, and if I convert this into a NumPy array, and if I use NumPy.sum, um, so here, I mean, the result is going to be true for anything that's missing. Um, and then when you convert that into a NumPy array, all the trues would become 1 and the falses would be 0. Um, so if you sum that up, so if you get a value anything other than zero, that means you still had some missing data. But but since we got a zero, nothing is missing anymore. So. Um, so, uh, so I want to talk a little bit about grouping uh, here, right? Um, because, I mean, th this data is an, is an example. So the, the first two columns, if I can go back up real quickly here um, to, let's say that, or actually, let me just go ahead and um, print out the data frame. So let's, let, let's look at the, the head of the data frame again. Okay? So these first two columns really aren't results. They are recording experimental manipulations. Okay, so um, our virulence, you know, we tried, we had 50 times where we, where we did a measurement where the virulence was 0 0.5 and then 50 times when it was 0 0.6 and so on. Okay, so these are really metaparameters or experimental manipulations. So probably the question that we want to answer is how does Shannon diversity um, how is it affected by the virulence, all right? So what we, what we really want to do is kind of group by the virulence. So, so we could do that uh, with the tools you've already seen so far. So I could, like, find the, the, those 50 replications where the virulence level was 0 0.5. So this would just pull those out, um, uh, doing, a, doing a, a Boolean indexing, with, you know, to a mask like we, like I showed before. Um, and I could use that to, to calculate, for example, the mean and the standard deviation only for those where the virulence was 0 0.5, to find the, the, the mean and the standard deviation of what looks like the, the result, the, the Shannon diversity measure that was being used. You know, and we could do that for 0 0.5 and 0 0.6 so, and etc. So I could do that for all of my actual experimental conditions here. Right? Uh, However, I mean, this kind of grouping by a um, experimental manipulation is very common for a data set like this. So we might, in, so, so pandas has built-in stuff. So for example, I can group by, um, I, I can call group by on a data frame, and I can tell it which column to group by, okay? So here, since, uh, again, I also already showed that um, all the, the, the levels now, um, Um, sorry, not data frame, uh, parasite, that's why I couldn't complete. So the function is count um, There we go. I must have had it misspelled. So, so the function is called. So, if uh, if I haven't mentioned it before, I'm basically tabbing. If I hit the tab, it'll try and complete. And if there's more than one completion, um, it sh it should give me a list. But in this case, there's only one completion. So, um, that's not what I want. So, um, 
value count. So uh, I already showed this um, in uh, in this notebook here. But uh, but yeah, if I want to get like a table of, of of the counts here, but but this also will show me all the different levels again, right? So, so these were my different levels, and we filled in all those blanks with one by one. So I got fifty results of 0 0.5, 50 at 0 0.6, and so on, for our, our basically seven different conditions here, right? So if you group by virulence, it's going to group, so, so the 50 column, uh, sorry, the 50 rows that were level 0 0.5 virulence will be in one group, and then the 50 rows that were 0 0.6 will be in another group, and so on, and then this will get the mean only for the things by group, right? So this will be the mean for the 50 value, 50 replications, at the 0 0.5 level, and so on. It'll get, it, get us all in one operation, right? And the result is a, um, is a new data frame, right? So in this case, if I asked ask for the mean, it gave me the mean for, you know, but, but really this isn't useful because the, the, the replicate is really a metaparameter, but, but here's what we really want, you know. So this was the mean of the Shannon diversity at the 0 0.5 level and at the 0 0.6 and so on. So if I want to, I can I can I can save this group. That this is really a new object that I didn't really talk about. It's a pandas group object of some kind. Uh, but then you can use that. Um, uh, it is a sequence. So for example, I can use that to pull out just the Shannon diversity column and get the mean. So here I can get the mean and the standard deviation by um, each one of my groups, right? Which is kind of what I want. Because I want to plot the this, this is kind of really my answer, so I can see what the mean values were of the the diversity and, and what the variance was, the standard deviation uh, for each of these. Okay, but if I want to do something like plot these, visualize these, um, I might want to put these back. This is this is kind of common. So I'm going to put these back into like a data frame. So I'll create a data dictionary. These are really kind of like two series now. Uh, where this is the index, and then this is the value of the mean, and this is the value of the standard deviation. Um, so if I put these back into a data frame, um, like we've seen examples before, now I've got a data frame where where the group, um, you know, the the the, the virulence level um, is now my index, and I've got two attributes: the the mean at, at that level and the standard deviation at that level. Okay. So that allows me to do something like plot, do a bar plot on the mean. And then I can also add error bars where I use the standard deviation for my error bars, right? So in this case, I'm going to divide by the square root of the, the um, sample size for each one of these, which was 50, the replication size, which will give me what's known as the standard error. Um, so then we can see those, those error bars, right? So here we got a relatively good visualization of the experiment broken down by the virulence level, right? So it seems to mostly increase, um, um, you know, so I'm assuming that Shannon, that, so this is really a Shannon diversity if I was to label this over here. Um, so as, and I assume, uh, you know, the higher vir virulence is bad, so those are, these are the worst viruses, right? They're more virulent, <laughs> I can't pronounce that. Um, but, um, uh, but yes, for some reason, once you get to 1.0, it goes back down here. So, uh, like I discussed here, I don't know. And, you know, we can't really rely on this one because we kind of made up that level, you know. So maybe this was really 0 0.1 or something, right? Uh, but yeah, maybe also this one was mislabeled, so maybe this was 0 0.1, you know. Or maybe that's just really the, the, the actual result, you know, so. Um, all right, so that, that was grouping. Uh, one final thing, I, I want to talk a little bit more about categorical attributes. I've mentioned these in previous videos, I think, a little bit, and we'll talk a lot more about these uh, kind of in our next unit in this class. Um, so another kind of attribute in, in, in a data set that you're using that can be problematic um, are categorical variables. So you, so you always have to do something to handle those. Right, so these are variables normally that have like a discrete set of values, like um, like the sex might be in there, male or female, um, or um, you might have a category like um, like um, um, cancer type, like like uh, uh, level one cancer, level two cancer. What's, what's the thing I'm trying to think of, or something like that, right? 
So, so let's look at it. Let, let's say that this is like a, a grade, like A, B, C, D, F. Although, what's what's that E about there, right? But anyway. Um, so in that case, so, so grades are also kind of an example, but you might want to turn that into a categorical variable. So, and you have the, the, the five levels normally, A, B, C, D, and F, right? So... Um, so here, I mean, since these are strings in the data frame that I just created from this data dictionary, um, so those are going to get loaded in, like I talked about, as objects, because it can't assume that those are categorical. Those just might be, you know, uh, free-form strings that need to be used for some reason in our data. Um, although... You know, maybe I'll just point out, you know, for one, for one thing, normally things that, that are just regular strings are often not useful in data analysis. Like, for example, like the person's name, you know, so, so normally, you know, we don't really need the person's name if, if you have that, if, you, if the data hasn't been anonymized, right? Uh, or like maybe your street address, although sometimes string data you can turn into a categorical data or some sort of numerical data, so like a street address, maybe you could look that up along with the state uh, or the um, the country and Providence code um, to get a latitude and longitude, which could then be actually useful. So, but um, here, let's let's turn the grade into a real category type. Okay, so so here. Uh, I'm going to leave the raw grade in there as, as a string or as an object, but um, I'll create a category from it using the as type uh, here. Um, so now we've, we've got actually I added and I also added that column to my data frame, uh, but, but now the grade is actually a category variable and it's got three levels, A, B, and E. Okay? Um, so now, so, so categories are safer to use when you're doing data analytics. So for one thing, um, it knows that there really should only be three acceptable values for my category, A, B, and E. So if you try and uh, change one of the values, like the last one um, in, in the grade, to be like an F instead of an E, to fix it that way, um, uh, you'll get a value error. So the correct way to do that is to actually update your categories um, labels, right? So I could I could update the category labels to be you know uh, A, B, and F, right? Um, which we could do. Although here we'll show another thing. So so instead I'm going to update the category. We still have the same three categories, but I'm going to call them very good, good, and very bad. But here, I, I actually updated those. So right away, if I print out the data frame, um, um, instead of you know the A, B, and, and E, we'll get very good, good, and very bad. Right. Um, now, if you want to, I mean, sometimes you need to add category levels, and, and also sometimes you need to rearrange these. So in this case, um, you know, there is a natural ordering to, if, if these really are letter grades, so you might want to have F first to be at like your level zero to correspond to like a, the, the, you know, a 4.0, 3.0, 2.0 uh, level, right? So I might want to reorder these, and I might want to add in the things that represent my missing like C and B. So, so here I have um, um, F, D, uh, C, B, and A now, but, but I've given them the, the name. But notice when we do this, um, it didn't actually, so, so even though now, you know, very good was like zero level, but now it's level uh, four, if this is zero, one, two, three, and four, right? But, but it did, it correctly renumbered that or, or, you know, kept it as very good, even though I, I rearranged the order of the existing ones at the, and at the same time added some new ones, right? So, um, all right. So now we can actually sort by that. Um, so so the, the normal sorting order will end up with the the first one or the, the level zero will be first down to the level one, right? Um, and um, 
and if you want to, so we saw the group by before, so we, we can find out you know, if we have any missing categories by grouping them and then using the size to, to count up each one of these. So, so we got three very goods, two goods, and, and one very bad, and we're missing. We don't have any bads and mediums because we added those categories. So. Um, and kind of like I said, I mean, these, these um, really are assigned category codes, you know, so... Uh, the very bad ended up at level zero, um, and then the, the good and very good ended up at three and four um, because it, it numbers them zero, one, two, three, and four. So you can actually pull out those category codes um, if you need to. So, for example, if I need to convert this data frame to a, a NumPy array so I can do some machine learning with it, I might want to actually use these category codes um, 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 instead. Um, okay, so that is basically it uh, for this video. So we, we covered the basics of data frames and a few things that I think will be the most important, the most common kinds of things that we'll need for this class, you know, so indexing and stuff and loading our data um, and, and grouping and, and, and handling missing data and some things like that, okay? So hopefully that gives you a handle on what data, Panda data frames are all about and how you can use them um, and how we'll be using them in this class. Um, so that's it for this video, and I will see you then in the next video.